Okay, we are at the point in the project where we will be doing the chart. I do want to quickly go over how to read uh, the chart, graph, whatever. Now the PDF will be rolled up where it will all be rolled out and you'll have the graph. So you can follow whichever you find to be easier for you. I'm not seeing anything else. So I'm just going to use the bottom of a sock. Okay, first of all, you go from left to right. Every row will be from left to right since you are working in the round. And so you start with row one and the empty ones are your background color, which for the sock we are working on, that would be your pink. The X's are your foreground color, the skulls, which will be the gray. So you would work all the way around the loom following these, you know, every counting from peg one to 18, which you already have your pay, your you'll have your loom marked out, which makes it so much easier. So that would be your row one, which I will work that one with you. Then you go down, and for the second row, you would have two pink, then you'd have gray, you'd have three pink, then a gray, and then you'd just be following that. Now, as you go on, there's going to be more and more gray as you get further along to see the skull and as you can see this is upside down but you're doing one row at a time so you're doing one row at a time working it upside down and you will eventually this is how it will turn out now I do I use I have some stickers I use things to separate my rows out so that I don't get confused one part that you really really need to pay attention to is row 10 and 11 because they're basically the same and if you're not paying attention you can end up accidentally repeating one of these rows I done it like three times um, definitely pay attention uh, it's not fun to take apart so you will follow it from left to right top to bottom and then when you get to the bottom you just automatically go back up to the top. So row 1 and row 20 are the same as row 10 and 11 to where you only have their complete negatives of each other and it can be a little easy to um, forget which one you're on. Okay, so let's go over row 1. I will show you how to tie in your floats, explain the floats, and how to switch your collars. We need to add in the skull color. So what I'm doing is I'm just looping it around the pink. Just kind of holding that in there. And let me see. So I have this peg right here. This peg right here is considered your peg one. So if we go to the chart, peg one, two, and three is empty, then four, five, and six will be your gray. So we need to do our flat stitches on peg one, and there's two. And then three. The grays in there, we've done peg one, two, and three. So four, five, and six, like the chart shows, will be the darker color, which is, I'm using a gray. And what we're going to do for this is we're going to kind of have to, what we're going to do for this, we're going to kind of have to anchor this yarn in as we go so we don't have these big, long strands showing up in the back. So we want the gray yarn to go behind it. And I just doubled it over because that makes more of a more secure, um, it makes it a little more secure so it's less likely to come undone. So one, two, three, we got four, five, and six. Now, for this one, 
this row, there's a lot of twisting in your floats because four, five, and six are the only pegs that are going to be gray for this entire row. And in the next row, only three and seven will be used. Then it's going to get uh, quite a bit easier with uh, the floats. Okay, so... So we got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then this whole section is going to be empty, and then we're going to start putting the gray back in over here. But right now I'm going to show you how to tie these floats in. So put the gray on top, and I'm going to tie in the floats every three stitches. Which all I do is I put the gray in front. You're basically twisting it in. Now see how I have two strands here. That's worked through a bit. So I'm just going to tuck that down in there and we'll weave it in later. So we have the main string coming from the yarn right now. So you twist it in front this whole section is empty and twist twist okay so we're back at her peg this is the end of the chart so this will be peg one two three four five six so we got peg one done which that's three so we'll twist that around so two one two three have the pink in front peg four five, six, and again, the gray will go in front since the pink is the next collar. So one, two, three, you hold that in front and twist it over. One, okay, I'm going to stop there and kind of show you what the inside's looking like now i'm going to fold i'm going to flip one of these other socks inside out so you can kind of see what the inside's going to look like the yarn you're twisting is this back here now if you're using a wool or an animal fiber most likely over time this will actually felt and become a lot softer which is really nice but you do still want to make sure to hand wash them you can kind of see the skull shapes too, which is kind of neat. That's why we were twisting these, because if we didn't, we'd have long strands coming across and you would get your toes and stuff stuck in them as you were wearing them. So what we did, because I would keep doing that until I got back to my first peg, which I've got marked. What we did is just this row right here. Row one is complete and I'm going to kind of, well, row one of the skull charts is complete. So I want to kind of give you an idea of what you should, what it should look like. You should have three and then this spot's empty. One, two, three, and then you have three grays. Then this spot will be empty. And again, you have the three and then empty. So you should have one, two, three sets of the very bottom part of your skull. Now for the next row, and this one's a pretty easy one to remember because when you come to the grays, you actually, it'd be opposite. So this one would be gray, these would be pink, and this one would be gray. 
and you just follow along and when you see these ones you know the first one and the last one here are gray and these middle ones will be the pink or of course whatever colors you're using at this point you just kind of keep working following your chart you can make it you can repeat this chart as many times as you want now for this sock for the mate I did there's one two three and a half chart repeats so there are three and a half chart repeats which basically means I did it one two three and then I stopped here in the middle just for this one just because of the length that I'm making that one for someone specific or else I would have ended up finishing out the chart so what you do is you follow the chart repeat it as many times as you would like and then show this up close you do one two three four five rows of your background collar which on this of course will be the pink and then we will do our two by two ribbing for the top but I will show you how to do that when we get there